Today, we're stepping away from lasers for just a moment and diving into something just as exciting, building your dream CNC workshop. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. I'm Brett, and this is my laser garage. Me and my wife run a full-time laser engraving business out of our home, and this channel is all about helping you out with your laser or CNC business. Today, we're stepping away from lasers for just a moment and diving into something just as exciting, building your dream CNC workshop. Whether you're starting out or you're looking to level up your workshop, this video will guide you through the process of setting up a CNC workspace that will help you maximize your creativity and efficiency. We'll talk about layout, ergonomics, software, workflow, and more. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't already, and let's dive into building your dream CNC workshop. Let's start with the big picture. Having a CNC router can be a game changer for anyone looking to create custom designs, whether for personal use, selling products, or simply experimenting with new ideas. Imagine being able to create your own furniture, signage, prototypes, or even intricate 3D models from wood, metal, plastic, and other materials, all in the comfort of your own workshop. But here's the best part. The challenge of building your own workspace and growing alongside your creations is incredibly fulfilling. It's a journey of learning new skills, solving unique problems, and pushing your creativity to new heights. And trust me, there's nothing quite like watching your vision come to life, piece by piece. Now, before we can start cutting, let's talk about the layout and ergonomics of your space. A good layout makes your workflow smoother, minimizes unnecessary movement, and maximizes productivity. First off, consider your space requirements. Your CNC machine is going to need a fair amount of room to work around comfortably, so make sure you have enough clear floor space for the machine and the materials you'll be working with. A common mistake, which I've made myself, to be honest, is cramming everything into a tight space, which can make operating the machine frustrating and even dangerous. Even a small desktop CNC will need this to achieve an efficient workflow. You should aim for a dedicated work area that gives you room to maneuver around the machine. For me, I like my CNC machines to be positioned in a corner or along a wall in order to save floor space in my shop. But you may want to position your CNC away from a wall if you anticipate needing to use the pass-through or tiling feature often. You also may want to consider a flip-up table design so you can stow away your CNC while not in use. These can either be shop built or purchased online. My CNC is set up along the front corner wall of my garage and it sits on top of a Husky rolling tool chest. The top is a simple sheet of three quarter inch plywood trimmed out with some one by material. Its dimensions are 61 inches wide by 36 inches deep. This gives me plenty of room for my two foot by four foot Shapoko 5 Pro CNC. Since the Husky tool chest is only about 24 inches deep, I have it placed off the wall about a foot and the worktop is secured on the wall with a 2x4 ledger board. This makes sure everything remains stable while the machine is running. I also made a little cubby on the side to house my VFD spindle controller. And speaking of storage, having a smart storage solution is essential. You may want to think about wall-mounted shelving, cabinets, or bins for your tools, materials, and parts. Or think about something like my tool chest set up here. Either way, you need to experiment a little bit to figure out what works best for you. My best advice here is to keep your most used tools within arm's reach of your CNC. I like having these magnetic strips on front of my CNC so I can store my most often used tools, like my Allen keys and my collet wrenches. Also, set up specialized storage for your most used tools and accessories. One of the best things about having a CNC machine is having the ability to create customized storage. You can either design these from scratch or find many different working files online to help you get started. These are probably the best beginner projects because they are easy to create, use cheap or free scrap material, plus can easily be customized to fit your specific needs. I have this one dedicated drawer in my toolbox that holds all of my CNC tools and accessories like end mills, clamps, and measuring tools. All right, so now that we have our space set up, let's talk about the workflow. How do you go from design to finished product? Software can be separated into two different sections, CAD and CAM. First, a lot of your workflow happens in your CAD or computer-aided design software of your choice. Popular options are programs like 
Carbide Create, Easel, or Vectric. My personal favorite is Carbide Create, which is available for free from Carbide 3D, the company who also makes the Shape Elko series of CNC's. The free version has lots of great features for designing 2.5D projects and assigning toolpaths to them. I have the paid pro version though, which for about 120 bucks has a few upgraded features, as well as the ability to create 3D models. Next, your computer aided manufacturing or CAM program will tell your CNC what you want it to do. It uses a language called G code to talk to your CNC machine, telling it what areas to cut, at what speed, and how deep to go. Remember, CNC's are powerful machines, but they are not exactly smart. They will do exactly what you tell them to do, even if it's the wrong thing. So take your time and keep watching for my tips on how to best prevent these types of errors. So my go-to CAD and CAM software is Carbide Create and Carbide Motion. While Carbide Motion is CAM software that only works for Shapeoko-based machines, Carbide Create can be used as CAD software for any machine. I recommend it for all beginners because of its simple layout, tool library for common, safe speed and feed rate settings, and its preview features allow for you to visualize your toolpaths before finalizing your project. Don't have a Shapeoko CNC? That's okay. When I run my Fox Alien CNC, for example, I do all my designs and toolpaths in Carbide Create, then run them using a free CAM program called Universal G Code Sender. There are tons of options as far as software is concerned, and it's probably the largest learning curve when starting out with CNC's. The great thing is though, there are tons of online resources, especially YouTube videos, which dive deep into this topic. Make sure you do your research before you buy a machine to help you hit the ground running once you pick a CNC. Sometimes one overlooked component to your CNC setup is, well, your computer. You may forget to add this to your budget when planning on purchasing a CNC. But the great thing is, for the most part, CNC's don't require a whole lot of computing power. An old laptop or a PC computer you have laying around will probably work fine. I got by for a long time with like a 10 year old laptop I had, but have since moved on a little bit in my setup. My workflow now consists of designing my files on my shop PC, which is a pretty inexpensive mini PC I got off of Amazon for about 200 bucks. Then I load my file onto a USB drive, and load the file onto a small, cheap tablet I have mounted to my CNC. This tablet runs my CAM program, Carbide Motion, and allows me to run files and jog the CNC machine while standing right in front of it. I also have a small wireless keyboard that I use to control the tablet and jog the machine even more efficiently. I love this thing. I like this setup for my needs, but a simple laptop or PC setting next to your CNC would work just fine. If you're interested in any of the computer components I just talked about, check out the video description. I'll have everything and more listed as affiliate links. You don't have to purchase through these links, but if you do, I get a little kickback from Amazon, which greatly helps out the channel. All right, so we've talked a little bit about your workspace, software, and computers, but before we press start on the CNC machine, let's walk through setting up and operating the CNC safely and efficiently. First, Check the material you're working with and ensure it's secured on the machine bed with clamps or double-sided tape. I prefer using these plastic hold-down clamps from Carbide 3D because I feel they are the easiest to use and are also reusable. Plus, Carbide 3D has a large array of other hold-downs which can be purchased on their website or 3D printed for free from their 3D print library. Making your own clamps or hold-downs are also another great beginner CNC project as well. You may also have noticed my upgraded spoil board set up here I'm running. This is a product that I produce right here in the garage on this CNC and sell on my Etsy shop. The beauty of the spoil board is that it combines a removable dog hole fence for repeatable zeroing, 120 threaded inserts for additional clamping, and it's made from one inch MDF. So it can be reserviced more times than the stock three quarter inch spoil board. If you'd like to learn more about this spoil board, check out this video here. And I'll leave a link to my Etsy shop in the description below. Next, double check you have the correct tool inserted into your collet and it's locked in tight. Now you can set up your X, Y, and Z zero points. You can do this manually or by using a touch probe. If you'd like to learn more about my Shape Oko's touch probe, the Bit Zero 2.0, you can check out this video here. 
Here's a tip if you're new to help you avoid machine crashes. Before starting the cut, always run what's called an air cut or a dry run of your project raised above your actual workpiece. To do this, load your file like normal and set your X and Y zeros. But set your Z zero height about one or two inches above your material. This allows you to watch the machine's movement without cutting into the material, giving you a chance to catch any potential issues. It's an extra step and additional time, but may help you avoid a crash or a broken end mill. Lastly, don't forget to fire up your dust extraction and turn on your router if you're using one. Nothing worse than running a job without the bit spinning. Don't ask me how I know about that. It's now time to hit start and let the machine work its magic. But remember, probably the most important tip of the day, always, always, always supervise the cutting process to ensure everything runs smoothly and safely. Never, ever walk away from your shop while your CNC is running. All right, so we've talked about a lot so far, and really, we've only scratched the surface on this whole journey. But one of the best parts of owning a CNC machine is really the community. There are countless CNC enthusiasts out there sharing their projects and offering tips, tricks, and support. If you're looking for inspiration or need help with the tricky design, there are tons of online communities and forums you can join. Some of my favorites include IDC Woodcraft's YouTube channel, Carbide 3D's YouTube channel, and also the free file sharing website called CutRocket.com. These are just a few of the many resources out there online, which are full of great people who can offer support and feedback. They're great for learning new techniques. Now, I wanna hear from you. What is your ultimate CNC workshop goal? Do you have a dream project you're working on? Looking for your first CNC machine? Looking to upgrade? Leave a comment down below and share. So there you have it. We've discussed a lot about how to build your dream CNC workshop from the layout, software, and workflow basics. I hope this video has given you some solid insights and inspiration to get started on your CNC journey, or maybe some tips on how you can improve your setup or workflow. And if you only remember one thing from this video, I think this is the most important. The best workshops are built over time, so don't feel like you need to have everything perfect right away. Just start with the basics and keep improving your space as your skills grow. We only scratched the surface during this video. If you're interested in drilling down into any of these topics, please let me know in the comments. And if you found this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe to The Laser Garage for more CNC and laser tips, tricks, and ideas. And don't forget to check out these laser and CNC videos coming up next. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.